Pat Love from Love Healing Hearts, here to read Romans chapter 1, verse 16. And then we will follow with Pat's two cents. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, the Jew first and also to the Greek, which means nobody, this is me talking now, nobody is exempt, okay? So the bottom line is, what is being ashamed of the gospel of Christ? You know, when the Bible says God is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore, guess what? That doesn't apply to us. It, it is true about God, but sadly it's not us because we're fickle. People are fickle. And one minute we're gun-ho about the word and the principles of God. We're gun-ho about the Bible and all that it stands for. Holiness, righteousness, good, love, unity, obedience, all that good stuff. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. When we're on our game, we are all for it. But let us slip off the tracks a little bit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And all of a sudden, the excuses begin to mount up. And they just add this little ant hill, and it becomes a hill, and it becomes a mountain, and it becomes something insurpassable because, or unsurmountable, whatever the word is. Because we have so many excuses now. We can't see the right for all the wrong we're caught up in. See, when life happens and you change your standards, you lower the bar. You don't raise the bar. You lower the bar because you want to do what you want to do when you want to do it. And it's quite more convenient to tell that lie than it is to tell the truth. It's way easier to let that man or that woman feel all over you because you ain't had none in 10 years. And man, God knows your needs. He understands. He gave you those desires, right? Yeah, keep on rationalizing. God ain't going for it, but you are. And the more you go for the yoky dope the more you slip off the beaten path. Because remember, wide is the way to destruction, but narrow is the way. You hear me? We have to take the narrow route. It's tight, but it's right. So we don't like that because that means we have to deny ourselves. So if we get in a situation where you know, let's say us ladies, right? Oh, man, we're with this guy. He really likes us. He's got the hots for us. And he wants us to be his lady. And okay, now he's he's laying it on now. Well, I need to know that, that you and I are really together here. I really need to know that I can turn to you when I need to be with you. When, when you know, I'm a man, I got needs now. I need you to understand if we're going to be in this thing, we got to be all the way. Now, if you become ashamed of the gospel of Christ and become caught up in what this man thinks of you before you know it, whoops, will go the legs and off will come the clothes. You know I'm right because you having a man becomes more important than God having you. Same with you men. Some of you men, you live holy, you live righteous. Oh, you're all in the church. You're, you're doing all the duties of the church. You're performing. You're, you're serving with all holiness and righteousness. But you let the right mamacita slide up next to your side next to your weak side yeah and they got everything in the right place the right size they got the right shape the right length of hair 
and the face that knocks you crazy takes your breath away. And the cologne she wears, oh my, 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 my. You have lost your mind over this raving beauty. And you've also lost your stand. And now you start to become ashamed of the gospel of Christ because she is not as deep as you are. And she never wanted, and she says this, well, see, I can't deal with a, a fanatical Christian. There, there's such a turn off. You know, God gave us these desires. He knows what we need. And um, I need to know that, that you really like me. I need to know that when I need arms around me, that I can depend on you to hold me when I need to lean on you. And not only are your arms opening up, but boy, everything else is rising to the occasion. Whoop. So here you are. Now you're torn between two opinions, the spirit and the flesh. And because you men are given to your eyesight, the lust of the eyes, that's what drives you. You're very physical. What you see, you're very visual. What you see is what moves you. So if you're not seeing enough of God in the spirit and you pay too much attention looking up and down what you're looking at and how good she looks and smelling how good she smells and then your imagination starts going down a whole rabbit trail about how good it could be, you will give in. It won't take but a minute. And don't let that woman be forward because she will take that hand and put it all in the right places and you are done, baby. You are, cook. you are a cooked goose. You're done. You're gone. Your nose is wide open and your zipper is all the way down, baby. And you are ready, Freddy. Then, when you want to go to church, you're not that eager beaver because you mix with shame for messing up. But then you want her so bad. You don't want her to think that you're so heavenly minded, you're no earthly good. So now you're kind of yielding to what she wants to do. She wants to go to the movies on a Sunday or a Sabbath, either day. Whatever day you worship, you want to go to church, but you also don't feel good being around the saints because you're a little ashamed that you messed up. But she wants you. She wants you to be where she is. And now the tug of war begins. God, woman. God, woman. Man. Oh, man, got to have the woman. And next thing you know, God moves further and further away, not because he's leaving, but because you are pulling further and further. You're getting closer to her. And the closer to her and the closer to her whims and her desires you get, and the more you appease her and you satisfy your flesh, the further away you are moving yourself from the Lord. Oh, it's very dangerous because before you know it, you could be so backslidden that all that nookie you getting, you won't feel any more guilt about it. You'd be looking forward to it. You'll avoid the saints. You don't want to be around the saints. You don't want to hear what the saints got to say. You don't want them up in your business. You do not want to hear their opinions. You don't want to be reminded of your salvation. You just want to enjoy the tour. And the tour has no room for the things of God because she doesn't want a religiously fanatic man. She wants a man that's free. Yeah, buddy. That's what she wants. And you're going to be all that and her bag of chips. Fool, fool, fool. You're falling for the spirit of seduction. 
And when I say seduction, I'm not only talking sex, male and female, listen, I'm not only talking sex. Some of you, you fall for the spirit of seduction where you take on a job that never lets you go to church. They always have you on a short leash. Before you know it, you're called morning, noon, and night, 24-7 for this job. And you're doing the job because the money, oh man, the money, the money, the money. Oh boy, oh boy. You are getting your, your full, your fill of money. You got so much money to spend. You can buy two cars. You can almost buy two houses. The money, the money, the money. So what do you do? You become ashamed of the gospel. You won't stand and say, I will not be available on Sabbath. I will not be available on Sunday. Whichever the day is that you worship. Because I have to serve the Lord. And that is one day I will not work. No. No, you don't go there. You're ashamed of the gospel because the dollar bill has become your priority. And you would rather keep that job and put the Lord on the back burner for a while, not knowing that tomorrow's not promised to you. And there you are, just like the frog, slowly being cooked. And you don't know you're being cooked till you're dead and you're sitting on a plate. You don't know, because the devil is turning that flame up ever so slowly. Anyway, think about that. Think about being ashamed of the gospel of Christ. When you get around your friends who aren't saved, you haven't seen them for a long time, family reunion, and they cussing, drinking, smoking, snorting, toting, whatever. Come on, man. So, you know, well, you know, I'm, I'm saved now. Oh, come on, man. Don't be a stick in the mud. We ain't seen you in a long time. I, I know. Well, I just do a little bit. Shamed of the gospel of Christ. Shame. Shame on you for not making a stand. Shame on you for having not the backbone to face ridicule. You have got to be willing to accept ridicule. You've got to be willing to become acquainted, not only with the power of resurrection, but also with the sufferings of Jesus Christ. Jesus was rejected. Jesus was ridiculed and disrespected. Jesus was ostracized. And of course, you know, Jesus was killed. You know that. Thank God he rose from the dead. Therein lies our victory. But the bottom line is, what are you willing to do as you stand for Christ, as you stand for the gospel? Or are you too ashamed to rock the boat? Don't rock the boat, baby. Don't tip the boat over. Hey. Jesus rocked the boat nonstop. And yes, he tipped that boat over too. Now, where do you stand? And I leave you with that question. Because I think if you're not sure, you need to take it to God. God will tell you what's in your heart. He'll also give you the power to change if you want. God bless you.